with the weather that we see today in the 24-hour news cycle, it's just all the time, right? Hurricane, tornado, flooding, powers out, all that kind of stuff. A lot of that's the 24-hour news cycle because these things have always been happening. But setting that aside, I think a lot of people today are buying power stations because power stations can give you an option when the power goes out, right? It seems like it makes perfect sense. You get this little self-contained package. It's got power outlets for you for your 120 volt, for your 12 volt, whatever. It's got everything you need. You just push a button, turn it on. And once it's on, well, you just plug in your stuff, your coffee maker or your refrigerator or whatever, and it can last for, in some cases, several hours. In fact, I've tested power stations running refrigerators that lasted over 30 hours. Well, in the event of an outage, that would be a great thing to have, right? But what about the cost? Are power stations really a cost-affordable alternative to do-it-yourself solar power systems? And I think that's something that, well, I think it's worth looking at because one of the things I can say is that for myself, I'm not a wealthy man and I never was, but I've also worked for a lot of years, for, well, almost 50 years. So I, I put in some time. What's the point? Well, why am I talking money here? Well, power stations aren't inexpensive, right? I mean, a good quality power station with a decent amount of reserve power, let's call that something in the 3,000 plus watt hour range, you're talking over $2,000 for that power station if it's one of those top brands. And I think it's important to compare those because a lot of people are buying, you know, Anchor Solix or Blue Eddy or EcoFlow, right? They're, they're buying those big systems and those systems are not inexpensive. For a fairly big system, a 3600 watt hour system with a 3600 pure sine wave inverter, plus all the associated ports and the controller and everything that comes with it, in EcoFlow's brand, currently on sale, and a big sale, like 30% off, it was $2,200. It was actually $2,204. Okay, so $2,200, well heck, I bought a lot of cars under $2,000. But I got to thinking, does $2,000, or in this case, $2,200, does it get you enough value for that money that it's truly worth it. Or what could you build for that $2,200 in a do-it-yourself system? So I sat down and I decided to pull no punches, none whatsoever. I looked at an EcoFlow, I think it's called the Delta Max. It's a 3,600 watt hour battery with 3,600 watt inverter capable of something like 7,000 watts peak and a, some kind of sustained 4,500 watt ultra mode or something like that. Now, I didn't read the specs. I just know that that's a 3600 watt inverter with a 3600 watt hour battery and it has some ports on it. That's it. That's, that's what you get when you buy one of those. A battery, an inverter, a charger, which they called a fast charger, 2.7 hours, I think it said. 2.7 hours, so 3600 divided by 2.7. Someone do the math. That's around a thousand watts of charging. Okay, so how do I compare that? What I did is I went out and I priced out a Victron charge controller. Now Victron is a fairly new name to me because I played with solar for a fairly long time. And Victron wasn't around 15 years ago when I built my first system. So they're fairly new, but they've got a really good reputation. They're one of the most often cited companies that make charge controllers and inverters and that kind of stuff that do-it-yourself builders seem to go to. Now, I like Outback. I like Morningstar. I think Ames Inverters are great. Midnight Solar is great. There are lots of great companies. Schneider Electric, the, the Xantrax, right? These are great companies. But I decided I will just go with Victron. Just make life easy. It's blue. You can't miss it. Great reputation. It's supposed to be good quality stuff. So that's what I went with. Well, okay. Now, I also went with an XDNY battery because I've tested an XDNY battery and guess what? It's worked really, really well for me. And it's $399.99 on Amazon. I got a link down below for you. <laughs> so you're talking $400. That battery, a 100 amp hour, 25.6 volt battery, that's a 24 volt battery, 
which is 2,560 watt hours. But I put two of them in my do-it-yourself system. So instead of 3,600 watt hours, I've got 5,100 watt hours. Not double, but boy, I'll tell you what, a lot more power, right? Okay, so that's a little under $800 for that. The Victron MPPT charge controller was $416 and it could handle, I don't remember, but it was over 1200 watts of solar on the 24 volt setting. It's a 70 amp controller. And then I threw in another component, the Victron Pure Sine Wave Inverter Charger. Now it's a 3000 watt inverter and it's also a 70 amp charger. So it can handle that thousand plus watts of charging as well. Now, to be fair, the power station doesn't come with a generator. It doesn't come with utility power. It doesn't come with solar panels. It's a battery, a charge controller, an inverter, and a charger. That's what it is. And it has some ports. So obviously, if you're doing a do-it-yourself system, you're going to have to hook it up so that you could use the power ports in your house or you'd have to make power ports to go to it and breakers and wiring so you will have to do a little bit more but the total cost of my do-it-yourself system was just over twenty three hundred dollars so fifty one hundred kilowatts of battery comparable pure sine wave inverter a good name brand and a comparable MPPT controller that can handle the kind of solar that you're going to want to put into it and it's very very compatible in price but it is more expensive so is it worth it? Well, here's the thing. If you want to add to that power station, to add 1,048 watt hours was $500. So to add 3,000 watt hours to get it up to 6,600 plus, it's gonna cost you $1,500, which raises that price to $3,700 total. But on my do-it-yourself system, I only get to $2,700 when I punch it up over 7,600 watt hours. So it's now pretty much double, actually more than double, plenty of room to add in things like 24 volt to 12 volt buck converters of like 20 or $30 and a few cables and things like that. Now you might say, but you're not talking about solar power. Well, yeah, because you don't get a solar panel with the EcoFlow unless you pay extra for it. <laughs> Well, you can get a better deal on solar panels if you go look in places like Sun Elect online or heck on Amazon and build your own solar array. And I've seen guys build them with wooden racks, right? Now let's talk about the pros and cons of both and whether or not one is better than the other. So number one, if price is what matters, then the power station isn't actually the better option especially because I was talking about one of the top of the line power stations. So if it's a money savings thing, here's the deal. Do it yourself initial upfront cost is going to be greater because you're gonna have a, a bit more time, a bit more expense in cables and, and add-ons and things to make it as fancy as the power station. So I did find, unless I used other components, which I haven't really gotten into yet, but I could do that, folks. I could easily do that. I could, I could go look at some of the one step down charge controllers and uh, inverter chargers and all that kind of stuff and probably drop that price from $2,700 with 7,500 watt hours of power to maybe $2,000. But when you get up to that 7,500 watt hour range or 10K or 20K or 30K, that do-it-yourself system is going to be considerably less expensive. Absolutely. You're, you're going to beat the price all day long, seven days a week. I don't care what components you use once you start getting bigger. So in the initial cost, yes, it could be more expensive unless, of course, you're looking at a little bit less expensive components. But I could say the same thing for power stations, right? You could buy a less expensive power station. I know Pecron has got a heck of a, of a reputation. I've never used one of them but they sound like they've got a decent reputation and they're probably half the price of, say, an EcoFlow or a Blue Eddy. An Afri, I've run Afri and I, it runs great. I have seen a video on it where a guy points out that if you try to run 4,500 watts of heat guns off of it at once, well, it doesn't like that and it dumps the voltage on you, but then it's a 2,400 watt inverter, so trying to run 4,500 watts off a 2,400 watt inverter is probably great for bench testing to tell somebody how great a unit is or isn't, but it's not real life. 
I've never run more than one powerful item off any power station. Heck, I don't run more than one power powerful electric item off of my own solar power at the cabin. I, I just don't. You just don't do that. I mean, come on. You might run a fridge and a freezer and your lights and your stereo and your table saw. But you're not running your table saw, your planer, and your miter saw all at the same time while your compressor's running. Oh, by the way, I could at my cabin. And that's the difference between power stations and do-it-yourself builds. Because I put in a 4,000 watt pure sine wave low frequency inverter that can peak at 12,000 watts. I can run all those items at once without issue and with 10 kilowatts almost anyway of battery backup, I can run them and get by just fine. And 2,400 watts of solar input, <laughs> I got made in the shade then, right? But what's gonna work for you? And here I think is the key. I think this is probably the most important thing to a lot of people and that is not cost, but ease of use, simplicity. And that, folks, is where the power station shines. And as much as I can save a ton of money by building my own solar power setups, heck, even my own solar power station, I can make my own. The truth is, the convenience of a already made, decent quality power station, I, I don't think it can be beat. And I can just pick it up and go somewhere. If the power goes out, I can pick up my power station and plug in my refrigerator and I'm perfectly fine. So here's the thing, would I put solar in my house here and for my shop? And the answer is maybe, but not a definite yes. While I do like the solar panels on the roof at my cabin, they have, they have their advantages. I don't know if I'd want them on the roof here because there are some risks with solar panels in the roof, number one being, well, firefighters aren't gonna cut through them and they'll just let your house burn. <laughs> I mean, I know, that's not me speaking factually, I just know things I've heard. And it makes sense. You got a bunch of DC power up there, firefighters are not gonna try to cut through your roof when you got a bunch of solar panels. Especially not from the inside where they can't see them. Now, they could cut through the other side of the roof, but then they have to make that decision, right? So on the roof's not always the best choice. Well, what about on the ground? Well, on the ground, I do have some room for a solar array. But, but you know, I live, there's houses around. I'd have to make sure I got those up high enough and pointed in the right direction. And then they would obscure my view. I don't really want that either. And of course, there's the cost. I can't afford a whole lot. Now, <laughs> you might think, yeah, well, you're a YouTuber. You must be able to afford it. <laughs> then you don't know YouTube very well. <laughs> no, seriously, in all honesty. Could I, if I were to go out today, if someone said, Eric, here's $2,500, either do do-it-yourself solar or do a, a, a bigger power station, which would I do for my house here? I would probably do the power station. And it goes to simplicity and ease of use. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to build anything. I built my own solar power system multiple times now. I guess if someone came along and said, here's $5,000, what would I do? Well, if, if I felt like I could put solar panels on the roof safely, faced in the right direction, which my house doesn't face to the south, it faces actually to the east on the back of the house, west on the other side. Yes, I could put bi-directional panels up. I might do that and put some, some a serious backup system, maybe a 10 kilowatt battery bank, with you know, 2,500 watts of solar or something like that, yeah, I probably could do that. And then I would probably buy a power station too. Because honestly, I've already bought some power stations and I really love their convenience. And I think the message here today is when it comes to power stations versus do-it-yourself solar power, they both have their place. And for some people, the cost is going to be less important as the simplicity and ease of use of a power station. They're gonna be willing to pay more for that power station and the simplicity of just plugging in the manufacturer's battery, even if the battery is three times more expensive, because it's simple. You plug it in and, and it charges and it does everything you want. Versus doing it yourself solar, where you've actually got to put the solar panels in, you've got to put the inverter charger in. If your utility power's down, you're gonna need a generator. Yes, you're gonna need one for your power station too, but these are things you're gonna think about a lot more if you do it yourself. So do-it-yourself systems, 
definitely come into their own, I would say, above the 3000 watt hour capacity range. So in conclusion, folks, I would say that the power stations have their place. They absolutely have their place due to simplicity and ease of use. And the do-it-yourself solar power systems absolutely have their place when it comes to saving money and building a bigger, better, more robust system. So there you have it, folks. I hope I helped somebody out make a decision there. If you've decided to go one way or the other, let me know. Tell me why you went with a power station instead of do-it-yourself power or why you went with do-it-yourself solar power instead of a power station. Drop a line, let me know. And with that, folks, I'm going to drop another video right here. I do appreciate you watching. Y'all have a great day. The old jar head out.